G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to the plane that won the war twice. Do you get it? Because it's a, it's a P-51 Mustang, but two of them. And the P-51 won the war, right? Right? Because the History Channel told me so. <laughs> anyway, this is the F-82E. And the F-82E is kind of special. It's the only... It's, it's like one of the only planes... I'm, I'm pretty sure it is the only plane that can carry 14 Browning 50 cal M3s. I'm pretty sure the PV2 can carry about the same in M2s, but this plane has one of the highest fire rates in the game. And I would, I would probably wager that it has the highest fire rate of any prop in the game. The helicopters have got the, uh, the Mi-24, which has the MiG-21 guns. And I think the IL-28 also has the same guns. So both of them have a ridiculous rate of fire, but I'm pretty sure this thing does have a nutty rate of fire. Anyway, for those of you who don't know the F-82E uh, or the twin Mustang, it is a super heavy, big fat chonky fighter, but it makes up for that sort of lack in performance with an extra gun pod. It's put between the two fuselages and in total, you can get, I, th I think it was 14, either, either 12 or 14 50 cals. And you're at prop tier. The amount of firepower that you possess is just pure Murica. Nothing quite says Murica, fuck yeah, than twin P-51 Mustang. Apparently, this plane actually saw some success during the early Korean War, um, and I'm also told that the pilots or at least there was a pilot and a radio operator or a navigator or something like that uh, they often sort of got spooked if you will by each other being so close to each other because they're not used to being split apart like that in separate cockpits they're not used to seeing a fuselage so close to them and i thought that was kind of cool because the f-82 mustang is probably one of the weirdest planes in the whole game it's just about as weird as the Zvilling, which didn't really exist, but did at the same time. But this one was actually in production and saw service. It's kind of weird, and I have to appreciate it, especially being a P-51 Mustang. The P-51, in my opinion, is one of the best planes in the game, in all of them. All of them are really, really fun to play, for me at least, and I have basically strived to try and get a good game of each P-51 Mustang that we have in War Thunder and put it on the channel. I've got the Cannon Stang, I've got the P-51A from the Thunder League, I've got the P-51C from the Red Tails, I've got all the premium ones, I've got uh, the P-51D and the K. The only thing that I'm basically missing is the J-26 now. So look out for that one. I'm going to try and get some more P-51 or at least J-26 footage. So we are having a very rare match here against the Japanese. Japanese props are probably some of the scariest props that you will face in War Thunder, simply because they have a really good climb rate and that they can turn. So if they get above you, all you can really do is run. And whilst that's kind of practical and you can sort of do it if you're working as a team, we're playing an online game. And online games and teams really don't work well together. The Cannon Stang, or sorry, the uh, F-82E, the, the twin chonker Mustang, really does rely on getting above your opponents, boom and zooming, or at least having them distracted in the first place. And that's really difficult. You do get a good air spawn with this thing, but honestly, it is really, really tough to play. I've only had a couple of good games in this plane, and I would honestly put that down to sheer luck rather than anything. Full disclaimer, this plane is more of a meme plane rather than a very competitive fighter. I personally don't think it's competitive. Every time I play against the Germans, I get absolutely slaughtered. And I've only had a few games where I've gotten more than maybe two kills. Still, this plane can be a lot of fun if you force head-ons. And that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. I'm actually running stealth belts as well. So, extra surprise, extra freedom. Off we go with this J2M5, I managed to get a glancing hit on the J2M5, and I still set him on fire. Another J2M coming in straight for that booty, but unfortunately he doesn't really see me, and I managed to set him on, no, not set him on fire, cut his tail off, and there's a zero. Now the zero 
has a really, really good performance margin. You can see he came from above me, he dived, and he's able to sort of keep up with me up to 500 meters. And this is really starting to spook me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently put the nose down. If you are in a situation where you have a turn fighter catching you like this, put the nose down very gently at first. Don't go straight for the deck. Try and outrun it just a little bit, using a little bit of elevator, using a little bit of rudder if you can, and eventually he's going to get bored and turn away from you like he did right here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be an absolute bitch and go right back for it. So, yeah, it's kind of... I hate doing this, or I hate when it's done to me, but uh, in a P-51 twin, or in an F-82 twin Mustang, there's not many other options that you can sort of take to do well. And I know I'm like kind of eating my own words, but that's that's kind of how the cookie crumbles, and it does suck. So the A6M5 has probably, at this point, started to realize what he's done wrong, but you can hear me firing my guns again. I'm going to go for another shot at about one point two kilometers out and I managed to connect at about one kilometer so that is a fairly impressive range on the M3s they have a really high muzzle velocity and an insane rate of fire they do trade that off for a little bit of damage but of course when you have this many of them it doesn't really bloody matter there's so much that you can do with this amount of firepower you, you you're fearless you're absolutely fearless and I think that's put me on four kills which is no three kills which is fairly impressive, because there's not a lot that you can do against the might of America. So, speaking of the might of America, the P-47, the Jug himself, is in a bit of trouble, and I'm going to try and save him, but unfortunately I'm sort of starting to lock up, and my aim is potatoing, and unfortunately the P-47 gets shot down. Just as he gets shot down, there is an A-7M2, I believe, coming straight towards everyone, and that's really bad news for me, and it's also bad news that there's a zero behind me who kind of has a fair amount of energy or at least he can pull out a lot of energy from his arsehole and you can see he's just sort of helicoptering up to me so I'm just going to take the full commit head on I don't really care at this point and I managed to survive because of America so don't do that if you're gonna if you're gonna play the twin mustang don't commit to these sort of head-ons uh, as for this particular fine specimen I'm going to put myself into a vertical, try and avoid him, and it is an A7M1. These things are really, really scary. It's very, very hard to defeat an A7M1 if you aren't in an energy advantage. But I'm in the Twin Mustang, and the Twin Mustang is actually fairly quick. It has a fairly decent top speed and can kind of readily do 500 kilometers per hour at a couple thousand meters, which is really nice. So. What's he going to do? He's going to sort of uh, linger behind me. He's not really going to follow me as such, as aggressively. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to turn in towards him and try and kill him. I'm going to put takeoff flaps on here. And one thing you will notice with the P or the F-82 uh, is its flaps are really strong. And you can, I believe, use combat flaps up to like 400 and something kilometers per hour, which you can't really do in too many other props. Oh, oh my god, I am potatoing this shot really bad oh man that was that was kind of hard to watch back for me and I just managed to run out of ammo as I set him on fire leaving me with six kills now obviously I don't have any more ammo left so what am I gonna do I could kamikaze into this a6m5 and give him a little bit of taste of uh, you know his own his own medicine but I think I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky here I'm gonna go in and be a sort of bait now the f82 Mustang can do this sort of thing but only if there are lots of opponents or lots of friendlies around so I wouldn't really continue to do this sort of stuff uh, I wouldn't do it as regularly this thing is a really really shit turn fighter it does not turn well at all and you can see here if I actually had ammunition I uh, probably would have killed it but unfortunately I potatoed all of my shots so the F-82 Mustang how is it is it actually worth playing well kind of if you want to play it in a squad, I reckon it would actually be quite fun. Personally, I don't find it terribly competitive, uh, but that's me, that's the way I play. Uh, despite me actually really enjoying Mustangs, when you put two of them together and call it a single plane, they don't really go that well together. It's kind of like the P61, actually. It feels very similar in terms of playstyle to the P61, except you don't have so many damn 50 cals that you can literally just freedom all day long. Although, you can kind of do it against the Japanese, because the Japanese are fairly slow. If you get yourself caught, P-51 
pants down in front of a 109 or a Taiwan 52 or a 190D, you're pretty much screwed. And that's kind of how it is with the F82. Anyway, ladies and gents, that's the F82. I've had a couple of people who have requested this plane for a while, particularly one of my mates, Philip. I hope you're happy, Philip, because you're an absolute mung bean. Anyway, ladies and gents, take care, and I'll catch you next time.